Okay. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Gents Talk series. Uh, I'm really excited for this one. We're here with uh, my boy, Sean Desmond. What's going on, man? What's going on, brother? I'm excited. You're excited. I'm, I'm excited. excited. I love it. I love it. I'm excited. And that shirt is dope. Thank you. That shirt looks popping Thank on you, this man. film here. You know, Steven, you know? Steven? Hooks, hooks oh, yeah. it up. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Branko. Yes, my boy. <laughs> I love it. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. Of course, man. Um, there's a lot to talk about. Absolutely. I can't wait. You've been doing a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to cut right to it. You were doing some big, big things for a long time. Yeah. And then you just decided, I need a break. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. I mean, I didn't really decide that I needed a break, if I'm being quite honest. I'll okay. tell you exactly what happened. Um, so, I mean, yeah, my career started in 2002 with my first album, obviously. Uh, Get Ready, Shook, Spread My Wings, all big friggin' records. Um 2005 then i had let's go red hair also big records then i took let's like go a was my favorite yeah really yeah and then um what happened was i started gaining this all kinds of traction in germany so from like 2006 to 2008 i was touring in germany two months at a time i toured with missy elliott black eyed peas um so i did that 2010 rolls along and I released Shiver, Night Like This, Electric. They happen to, then they become like my biggest records to date, which was crazy because that's like my second, it was like a five year hiatus between Back for More, which had Let's Go and Red Hair, and then Fresh, which was the album that had Shiver, Night Like This, and Electric. And people already at that point were like, ah, he can't, he's done, he can't come back. And then I released those three records and they end up being massive, like my biggest records to date. Um, 2012. Nobody Does It Like You, Dum Da Dum, um, also become these massive songs. And then <clears throat> what happens is I'm sitting in a meeting in a room with my record label at the time. And they're like, you know what, Sean? We think you need to, you need to be a little more edgy. I'm like, edgy? You mean? Like, you know musically, I mean? I'm not understanding. No, you know, like, you know how Adam Levine has all these tattoos and he's edgy. Like, you need to be a little, we think musically and everything, you, we got to edge you. We got to like harden you up a little bit. I was like, okay. Um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take one for the team. Um, you know, I've, but I now look back at it and I've always done everything kind of on my own and with like a gut feeling, like gut feeling in the music business is so important. Um, so, you know, I record a couple of records that are edgy and it doesn't work, right? And then, you know, I get a phone call. I'm, I'm in LA. I'm working on my album and get a phone call from the label. And they're like, hey, so um, we've decided we're going to go in, in another direction. We're not going to work with you anymore. We're not putting on this record. So you could imagine I'm in LA working on the album and I get a phone call. And I'm like, you... You know, like, I'm like, I, I was devastated. I couldn't believe it. So I hated the world at that point. I was like, I knew it. I should have just kept on doing what I was doing because I know why people like Sean Desmond. People like Sean Desmond because my music makes them feel good, makes them feel something. It's catchy. They can dance to it. And again, I should have just done what I always did. But you live and you learn. So I didn't by choice take a break from music okay that's what happened and i then ended up hating the music business and after that i was just like forget it i'm done um and then what happened my wife ended up getting sick so then gave me that extra like okay i do need to step away i've been doing this since 2002 it's now 2015 13 years and i just got to be a dad and a husband I have to. She needs me. Um, so that's what ended up happening. So she was she was pretty sick for a lot of years until recently. We just, like four weeks ago, she had to go in for emergency surgery. Um, she had to have her colon removed, part of her intestine. Um, but, like, she's, she's well on the road to recovery, doing really well. Okay. But you could imagine how difficult that was. Sure. During that time period where she was really sick, I was literally... I mean, and this, I don't, I don't want, this is not a pity party because when you're a husband and your father and you, and, and a father and you make that commitment, you just do it. So 
I was like, I was super dad, man. And I had to be that. And then, I know I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry. I'm just, Not I'm giving all. you exactly. No, no. So then like right before the pandemic, my best friend Tebe calls me, who's also an artist, country artist, and a very successful pop songwriter. Um, is like, hey man, why don't we start a project and where we write and produce music, but we're not necessarily going to sing or perform it, um, but we're going to be the face of the project and we're going to call it Radio Club. And I was like, yeah, I mean, that sounds interesting. Let's try it. So we do this dance house cover of Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley, right? And we put it out and the song's sitting at like 20 million streams right now. I didn't think it would have done anything. So we did a couple of records. When we did one um, where we sampled that Hey Now, Ico Ico record, also right now sitting at like almost 10 million streams. Um, and I'm looking back at it and I know what Tebe was doing. He was just trying to get me back into me because <laughs> he knew there was this huge void in my life. I spoke to about it. And even my wife knew the same thing. So this huge void in my life and it was music. I was missing that and I was miserable. And it started... I'm going to be completely honest. I started to go see a therapist because it was it was getting into my marriage and it was getting into my ability to be a good father. I was finding that I was just very short and very I was just I was not happy. I wasn't happy. So I had to make my wife was like either you got to go see somebody like you need to talk to somebody because this is not good. We can't continue being like this. Were you receptive? a hundred percent i love my wife and i love my kids and i knew i don't i want to be i want to be a i want to be a good father i i'm a good father and i knew i was but there was just something going on that i had to deal with and i dealt with it and i saw a therapist for months and it was the best thing i ever did my my marriage became stronger um i learned to become more patient with my with my kids and again it was the best thing i did so you know we do this radio club thing for a while and then I get this phone call this summer, an invitation to perform at this OVO show. Okay. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it was starting from scratch, call me. He's like, yo, Drake, hit me up. Ask me to ask you to perform at this show. Don't say anything to anybody because it's not announced, but you want to do it. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Sure, why not? It'd be good to like get up there and like, you know, do my thing, whatever. In my head, it's like, this is going to be a one-off. Like, I'm just going to go up there have my hurrah moment and like, that's it. I'm done. And then I'm going to go yeah, home, go to sleep sunset, and I'm going to yeah. live on, live the way I've been living. Right. Um, but I was, so leading up to the show, I had this, I had it in my brain. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to blow the roof off that fucking place. Sorry. Can I swear? Yes, of course you can. I'm like, I'm going to blow <laughs> the fucking roof off that place. Right? I love when people ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I don't know, you know, yeah. it's PG 13. Who knows? Right. No, but I said, I'm going to blow the fucking roof off that place. They're not going to know. I'm going to make them remember who Sean Desmond was, is. So then the show gets announced. I get a call from Jamie Appleby, who's one of the owners of wax records he calls me. Yo, Sean. Yep. What are you doing about this show, bro? What do you mean, Jamie? I got invited to do the show. I'm going to do the fucking show, and then I'm going to go on with my life. I just, you know? No, no, no. You can't fucking do that. He's like, it's a big fucking deal. This is like the kickoff to OVO. Drake wants you at the show. You got invited. You need, to, if you were ever going to make a, a comeback, this is it right here. You, like, do you want this? Fuck, I guess I really got to start thinking about this because yeah. that, that did not come, it did not cross my mind at all that that was going to happen. So I'm like, okay, Jamie, you know what? It's like, I'm going to set up some press. We're going to do stuff. We're going to make this a fucking big deal for nothing. I wasn't even signed to the label. He's like, I'm just going to do it as your friend because I want you to fucking win. Okay. So I start doing all the press surrounding the show. And like I said, I'm telling everybody I'm going to fucking kill it. I put my set together, this 12-minute medley of just hit after hit after hit. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop in between songs, talk to people, ruin the momentum. I'm just going to fucking hit them for 12 minutes. Day of the show comes. We show up at History. I brought my kids, which was amazing. My wife. We get to the green room. Jake sees me, calls me over. I'm going to tell my kids. I'm like, yo, 
We're gonna go meet. We're gonna go talk to Drake. <laughs> Don't embarrass me. I know <laughs> you're cool. excited. I know you want a picture. Daddy will ask him just that. So you know, we go up. He hails me up. I'm like, dude, thank you so much for inviting me. He's like, thank me. He's like, thank you. And I'm like, man, I'm like, thank you, right? He was so gracious, so kind to my kids. We took pictures. We spoke like amazing dude. So I'm getting ready. I go up on stage and it's nuts. I could see Drake on the balcony in the corner of my eye through my whole set. And the songs are changing. And I'm telling you, I, he's going crazy. Like he's banging the wall. Bang. So, yeah, but I have video of it. It's nuts, right? <laughs> so, and. I got my in-ears in. I'm focused. I was rehearsing for, like, I would be in front of my mirror in my bedroom. And my wife comes in. She's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, I'm fucking practicing for this show. Like, I, she's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, because I'm going to make sure that I'm going to kill this, right? So show's done. Head up to the green room. Green room is fucking packed. Just, I'm like, I don't want to be in here right now. I need to go cool off somewhere. Mm -hmm. So there was this hallway between the green room and the balcony where Drake was hanging out on. And so I go in there. Drake comes out the door, grabs me, pulls me to the corner. He's like, yo, bro. I'm like, what's up, man? He's like, yo, Sean Desmond, you're different, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, just like that. And I'm like, what? He's like, you're different, eh? I said, Drake, I don't know what that fucking means. What are you saying? <laughs> right? He's like, dude, did you you hear them? Did you hear them singing those songs? He's like, yo, those even those old ones from 2002? They sound brand new. Those These songs are living forever, man. What are you doing? I said, Drake, just thank you for inviting me. Like, But I lost the passion and I lost the drive. He's like, yo, Sean Desmond. He's like, he kept calling call me call Sean Desmond. I call him by your full name. <laughs> He's like, yo, squash that, squash that. Sean Desmond needs to make music again now. Fucking guy changed my life that night, man. Mm. Like... When the biggest artist, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it, the biggest artist in the world who's had such an impact on culture the last what ten years tells you you need to make music again. The people need you. Fuck, you got to think about it. So, it's a fire under your ass, yo. He, I've been saying he changed my life that night, man. And then, get in the car, and we're on my way home. It's like two in the morning. Me, my wife, my kids. I'm driving and my wife turns and she looks at me and she says, babe, I don't think you realize what you did up there tonight. I said, really? And she said, I can feel it. The universe is on your side, babe. Like, I know it's been hard and, you know, the last few years and there's this void in your life. But she's like, the universe is on your side. You need to do this again. And like, just to get that stamp from her, because really, I couldn't do it because she was so sick, right? And she's she's doing well now. And um, so to get that from her, and then Drake telling me, I'm like, damn, I really got to think about this. And let me tell you, the next fucking day, my phone, and I'm not saying, yeah, my, my social media was popping, but... The emails and the phone calls I was getting from people at the show in the industry, I'm talking like heads of Spotify, heads of Apple Music being like, yo, we were at the show. You blew us all the way. Is there music coming? Like, what are you doing? Like, to get that again from an industry that literally fucking chewed me up and spit me out, like... There's no fucking better feeling. Um, so, you know, I started, you know, and started recording music, started doing stuff. And we come to this song, Maniac, that's out now, that just came out. And Jamie was like, Jamie at Wax Records was like, yo, what's this? I said, Jamie, I fucking, I was, this is a song I had in 2014 that I was working on that never saw the fucking light of day. He's like, oh, he's like, dude, this chorus, like, holy shit. Um, we need to revisit this. Like this is this could be fucking something. Here we are, we're writing songs, we're trying to find it. I think we may have just found it. So uh we go in, we work on the song, and it becomes because I'd written a version of Maniac in 2014, but what you hear today 
is not the same. It's a lot has changed. Production, a lot of the lyric, um, but the chorus is pretty much almost the same. And it's, it's, it's great. And we finish it and we're like, holy shit. I'm like, did we just fucking find the record? He's like, I think we just fucking found the song. So we put it out, what, October 21st. Um, and we did this show at the Rivoli here in Toronto as like the launch to the single. Mm-hmm. And uh, like sort of like my my comeback. And it goes, it's ama- it fucking goes amazing. So many industry people fans it was it was incredible i heard it was a really good night it was a it was a great great night and um i'm so happy to get to share these moments with my kids like let me tell you my daughter was like front and center literally on the floor reaching to me like i was like her favorite musical (laughs) artist and i'm like that's incredible i see you every day you don't do this at home (laughs) right and then my middle son owen i see him and he's singing every word to every song and then i get home i stayed longer than they did they went home before i did but my 14 year old was still awake when i got home and i walked in and he's like dad i'm like yeah what's up bud he's like you did so good tonight and that was like for my sharing this with them and them getting to see like kind of what a big deal their dad was and maybe is still is so special man it's so special yeah but i just gave you guys a whole fucking lot right that's there good, man. But, that's yeah that's incredible <clears throat> that's that's got to be like validation for all the years that you went without performing and creating yeah to, and to, i'm not to, looking for, i was not looking for validation but which like is what makes it all right? the more special yeah is that you weren't looking for it it just hit you yeah. And it just sort of all come together and it's like your wife was saying in that car, right? Like it's the universe trying to tell you something. Yeah. Literally. That's amazing. Yeah. So now you've got this comeback tour <sighs> and it's blowing up. But you've learned a lot of lessons along mm-hmm. the way. Mm-hmm. What's the biggest lesson you learned from the Sean Desmond of the past and the Sean Desmond that's sitting in front of me here? Wow. Um, be careful who you let in your circle. Okay. It's huge. Um, again, do not let people influence your creativity. Because when I did that is when it fucking went to shit, right? Again, like I said, and I should have just did what I always did. Um, and also, a big thing I learned is don't take everything personal. Especially now, you guys know social media is a beast, right? Yep. It's great. But it can fucking suck, okay? And let me just tell you, for example, Six Buzz, okay, posted twice about me in the last week and a half. That's ma- That's major. That's huge. I didn't ask them to do that. They're doing that out of love. And these guys, you read the caption, they're fans. You read some of the fucking comments. and But I'm going to say like 98% of them are, it's love from people, everybody. Then you got the one or fucking two morons that are just stupid and they want you to fucking say say something right and get it and get they love that shit they love it they feed off it right reaction right i'm just like hell no i'm not giving you the fucking time of day i'm not taking this person like i fucking care about you right and that's where before it was easier to do that because we wouldn't fucking see everything yeah now we see everything but i just learned put down the phone put it there i don't care i have nothing to prove to you Right, I'm doing this because I love fucking doing it, and if I could be successful, great. What does success look like now? Now, that's a good fucking question. Um, I imagine a young Sean Desmond looks at success and just goes, "I just want to get my music out there." Yeah, but you've gotten your music out there. Mm-hmm. You've had major hits. You've have the love. People are reaching out to you. The King of the World has reached out to you and said, "I want you to come back and start making music." But what does success look like for me? I want people to remember me. I want to make people feel something, okay? And sure, remember me for the music I made, which is great, but also I want them to remember how I made them feel in a moment, in an encounter, in a song lyric. I helped them through a situation because for me, that's way more important. Um, The awards are great. The accolades are great. But like at the end of the day, 
when like my leg i want my legacy to be like fuck that sean desmond was a good fucking dude and he made good music right for me and so like that's what success is for me and yeah like sure i want maniac to do well i want a tour that's great i want to provide for my family uh, but that's every man right no matter what your job is that's what you want to do um and i just feel like if you could do that by doing something you love fuck you're successful man it doesn't matter what you could be a bricklayer fucking cement landscaper if you're successful at that fuck man you won and if you're happy and you're doing what you love, you won. At least that's what I think. Yeah. How do you mentally prepare yourself to jump back, let's say, into the ring with the same person that punched you in the mouth? Fuck. It takes a lot. It was like, man, that's a fucking good question. That's a great fucking question. Because I realize that I have nothing, again, I have nothing to fucking prove to anybody. I'm doing it because I love it. And it's funny because some of those same, I mean, I'm not I'm not working with the same team anymore, but some of those same people are still working and I'm hearing from them, right? And it's just, it's all love. I don't hold a grudge. There's no grudge. Listen. No space for it. No, dude, right now, with all the good shit happening around me, I don't need that fucking negativity. I don't need that shit. I need... I just I tell everybody send me the good vibes mm -hmm. send me the fucking good vibes because that's what I need right now um, and I again I hold no grudge Bi I get it business is business but like I'm gonna just fucking do me and that's it and the work I like I said the work is going to speak for itself that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna let the work speak for itself I don't gotta say shit Fair. I like that <clears throat> how are you managing you said that you went into super dad mode yeah. and that you had, you know, the responsibilities of being a father, being a husband, being a, a, a friend, a partner, all those things. And that was when you had, when you didn't have music back in your life, but now you have it in your life. Mm -hmm. And the commitment I imagine is yeah. exponential. Yeah. Everybody wants a piece of Sean Desmond's time. Yeah. How do you balance that with family? So it is a little bit easier for me now because my wife is well. Okay. So she is able to pick up kids from school, drop off kids at school, make lunches, take my daughter to dance, maybe take my, my son to soccer when I need to. But I do also balance. And I now I'm really picky about what I do. Because like you said, like, m fuck, the invites I get to do shit, I can't say yes to everything. It's impossible. So I'm, I am I pick and choose what, what I do. Um and I also have an amazing, we have an amazing family who's there for us. My mom lives right across the street from me, literally right across the street from me. If I need her to come fucking be babysit, she's there in a heartbeat. It's easy. My wife, my in-laws are literally two minute walk down the street. And they're also like, especially in the last four weeks when you could imagine I have, I'm preparing for this release of Maniac, preparing for this Rivoli show. My wife fucking goes into the hospital, fucking emergency surgery. And there's shit I need to do. I need to rehearse with my band. And so that was f fucking hard. And I remember coming home when she got home from the hospital. We hadn't done the, uh, it was like the week of my Rivoli show. And I got home one day and I, and let me tell you, I'm not embarrassed to cry in front of my kids, in front of my wife, in front of anybody. And I got home one day after everything and she was on the couch. She's, she's in recovery. It was a fucking hard recovery. And my kids are there and I sat down and I just fucking lost it. Right. She's like, who died? Oh my, who died? What's going on? I'm like, babe, nobody fucking died. I'm just on a, I'm on a roller coaster right now because I'm getting all this great shit news about maniac and people being excited about my comeback. And then I come home and I just want you to fucking be better. Right. Because I want to share this with you. And it's so fucking hard. And then I'm sad again. And then I'm happy. And then I'm sad again. And then I'm happy. And then I'm sad. And I, this was happening. And my kids see me cry. And like, I don't care. I'm not embarrassed. I want them to see me cry. I want them when something's bothering them to speak to me about it. Um, so yeah, it was, it's, it's been a fucking roller coaster for me. But I'm like, right now, I'm in such a good place. The last two weeks have been absolutely insane with everything I've been doing and the response. My, I mean, I wish I could share every message I get on Instagram and TikTok. It is nuts. I did not, in 20 years that I've been doing this, think that 
I made the impact on people's lives that I did, I still don't see it. I was just a guy who was making music that people liked, right? But I'm getting messages like, my God, so happy you're back. Please don't, please don't leave us again. <laughs> like, fuck, it's mind blowing. Like, please don't leave us again. It's crazy, you're loved, man. man. You're loved by the city. I everybody guess knows I get loved by the knows, country. Everybody knows Sean Desmond. Who man. doesn't? Everybody knows. Sean <sighs> Who's been living under a rock and doesn't know Sean Desmond? Yeah. That's what you're talking earlier. Remember, I went to school. And everyone's like, everyone's like, you're you're, you're their cousin, right? Hundred <laughs> so, like, percent Portuguese. Everybody, everybody's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they all love you, man. So it's good. I was I was wondering. So I love it that you crying for your ki- cry in front of your kids. Were you allowed that same? Were you allowed to cry as 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 a kid? Like, were you was there? You not you're not allowed to cry. Cause, you know, cause it's you have that very much open now, yeah. right? Was it because you weren't before, or you always have been? I mean, my parents listen. My parents loved me and my brothers very much, but we weren't. It wasn't. We weren't in a household where we talked about our feelings. I didn't come home and say, "Hey, Dad, I'm really sad today. Something happened." It just wasn't a thing i guess i don't know if it was a thing for you growing up or a thing for you growing up nope. it wasn't right for me it's I, I had yeah my dad encouraged it wow right? that's amazing yes. like it changes it changes how you like as you get older and we've talked about this so much about how you know when you have a family that uh, opens up to that kind of emotion it just frees you of so much burden so much emotional burden and i think that it, it takes courage. So I know you said you said you know you're not afraid to cry and everything, and you do that in front of your kids. I think that's courage is yeah. what that is, because you're breaking the stigma of men not 100%. crying and showing those emotions. Hundred percent. That takes courage, and for someone like you to do that, it just exponentially magnifies the importance of men finally showing their emotions. I agree. I agree, and you know. Again, not that my parents were loving parents. We always had everything we needed, but there just wasn't that emotion in the household where we came home and if I was crying, my, we would talk about it. You know, my dad worked as a hardwood floor. That was his trade. He was a he was a he would install hardwood floor. He'd come home, we'd have dinner, he'd take a shower and go to sleep. And we yeah. went to bed. That was what it was, right? Um me and my brother shared a room like we we I mean, we had everything we needed. We weren't rich. We shared a bedroom till I was like 18 years old, like me and two brothers, right? Um, but again, came from a, a, my parents, you know, their loving parents just didn't have, I feel like it's just different today. And like my my kids, I pick up my kids from school almost every day. I drop off and I pick up my kids from school. Have a good day, guys. Love you guys. They come in. How was school, guys? My kid, my son started high school. Hey, bud, how was school today? It was good. I didn't have that, and I don't think it was because they were not loving or not or mean parents because they weren't. It just it just wasn't a thing, and for some reason, like I, I don't even have an answer for okay, why it yeah. wasn't. You know it what just, I mean? Yeah, just it, it just, just wasn't time. different generation. Yeah, yeah. 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 and they yeah. probably didn't have that. For when that I was sad, either. I dealt with it, mm-hmm. and I just yeah. whatever. I was fucking sad, and you know. um, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of other. So men. how did how did you transition then from because you grew up in in a household like you said that wasn't necessarily unloving they they yeah. they loved you but they it wasn't facilitative of you know expressing your emotions yeah. to now you looking at that and wanting to change that for your sons. Yeah. What triggered that change in in, in mindset? Therapy. Okay. When I was seeing my therapist. And he was like, I, I kept saying, like, um, he's like, what are you afraid of? I'm like, I don't know. It's like, he's like, are you embarrassed? Are you afraid? And he did this exercise with me that was genius. He grabbed a piece of paper because he's like, why are you scared to talk about your emotions? I'm like, I don't fucking know. He's like, but you know, it's ruining your marriage and your relationship with your wife and your kids. I'm like, yes, I know that. He's like, all right, grab this piece of paper. So he was holding it. He, I grabbed the other side and he's pulling me. Right. And he's like, OK, listen. I'm I'm the fear, right? And I'm pulling you, okay? You come here, you're going to fall into this fucking pit, right? And you're going to lose everything. I'm pulling you. What are you going to do? I'm like, I don't fucking know. What do you want me to do? He's like, Sean, I'm fear. I'm pulling you. I'm going to pull you in this pit. There's only one thing you got to do with the fear. 
And I'm like, what? He's like, just like all the paper. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking, but it's genius. And it's so yeah. fucking simple. He's like, you just need to let go and fucking speak and talk. And that changed everything. Changed everything. So I was like, fuck it. If I'm feeling something, something's bothering me, or even if there's something that I think my wife is going to maybe be upset about, I'm going to fucking tell her and I'm going to talk to her about it. And that's what we've been doing. And it's the best thing I ever fucking did. I'm so glad that you're talking about that because I think there's so many men out there that need to need to know that. Need 100%. To hear that. There's this stigma that we can't cry. We can't feel. Um, we just need to deal with it. That's fucking not the way. Living with that on your shoulders you don't understand the release once you speak about it to somebody and just let it out it's amazing it's it's fucking great it's yeah i don't know man everybody's got to do it i feel like once you hit a certain age maybe 40 everybody should go talk to somebody just go just to fucking talk yeah. no judgment just talk it's so healthy and like because it's different talking to like your boy or your wife or whatever like no no you need to talk to somebody who's like Free of judgment, just no and bias. you just no, no, and you just fucking go and you talk for an hour. It's fucking awesome. It really is. Sorry, go ahead. Like I've I've, I've talked to people too, so I understand. Like you, yeah. I always tell we always talk about it too. Like you have to, because I say it's like it's a neutral. It's mm -hmm. like the person's not really judging you. Nope. So it's a, it's that release. You can just let it all out, mm -hmm. and it's 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 gone. It's like you know. It's, Screaming, screaming in the woods. Hundred percent, right? Yep. No one's, no one's gonna judge you. No one's gonna carry you. Mm -hmm. So you can just let it all out. Let me tell you, after those sessions, I got in my car and I was like, Whoa. <laughs> I feel good skip, right skip, now. Skip, I'm skip like, light. To skip to my skip, loo, yeah. back to the car, yo. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Wow. So let's let's shift a little bit back to the music component. So you you release the 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 record. You're filming a video. Yeah. It's done. Shot. Shot. Yeah. What's the process that's involved in getting this whole machine back up and running? Because I think people, there, there are artists out there that are either just starting out in their careers mm -hmm. and you know they, they see you make a comeback and they're like, wow, okay, I'm inspired. So I've been getting that a lot too, man. I, I can only imagine. And so I, I'm sure that they would want to know that if they could reach out to you and say, hey, Sean, how do I get this machine going? You know what is so amazing nowadays? Okay, so one, the music has to be good. If the music's not good, it doesn't work, okay? So the music has to be good. Two, the tools that these new artists have at their fingertips that we did not have in the early 2000s and whatnot, being able to now upload your music to a, a streaming service and then be available to anyone in the world. That's crazy. Like, in my day, you had to go to the friggin' store to fucking buy a CD. You couldn't <laughs> go just... Sean Desmond, Maniac. Boom, there it is. Two seconds. Right? Yeah. And you're listening to it, right? Um, that also social media, being able to like promote yourself and promote your work and like engage with, fa oh, fucking the fan, like engaging with fans is great. TikTok is a beast. Yo, I was like, at the beginning of this, when I st signed my new deal, they t started talking about TikTok. I'm like, fuck that. I'm not getting up. No, I can't. I'm like, guys, I'm a 40-year-old man. What am I going to do on TikTok? You want me to dance like all these dance trends and all that shit? And um, they're like, no, you should get on the phone with TikTok and just have a conversation with them. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. I'm open. I'm open-minded. Yeah. So I get on the phone with TikTok and I'm like, guys, what am I supposed to do? Like, everybody's telling me about this platform. I got to get on. What am I supposed to do? They're like, Sean, just be yourself. Go, go out there, post stuff that you would just post. Like, don't try hard. You don't got to do all these trends and all this dance. And you know what? They were fucking right. I started this thing on TikTok called Did You Know? So it was like facts about Sean Desmond that people may or not know. And I did like 10 episodes of that. And it fucking, like, I had zero followers on his, on TikTok the day of OVO show. And right now, what's what? That was July and we're in November. I have like 65,000 people following me. That's more than Instagram. And Instagram's been around for like fucking 10 years, 12 years, right? Yeah. So the engagement and like all that shit, and I have some videos sitting at like half a million views. It's it's so nuts to me, right? Um, but they were right. Just go out there, be yourself. And then I, it's funny because like now, I, my daughter's a dancer. 
Um, I pulled her out on uh, on stage on the OVO show, but everybody fucking went crazy. I'm like, hmm, there's something here. <laughs> so I started. <laughs> there's a business mind yeah. going. <laughs> so I started. Business. <laughs> she's like my dancing partner on TikTok as well. And th- like people love that shit. And it's just me being real, being a dad. I talk about my wife on, on TikTok, like about her struggles. I talk about my mental health on TikTok. Like just do stuff that's authentic. And it's fucking worked. It's crazy. So like all these tools that are available now, are really valuable, Hmm. really valuable. Um, So that's my advice to people. Work on music, make sure the music is good, and then just fucking put yourself out there. You know what I mean? Um, Because it's hard, like 60,000 songs a day are getting uploaded to Spotify and to all these, like that's a lot of music. That's a lot of music. So, you know, to like stand out, you really got to have something, have a moment, have something that happens. You know what I mean? But it's more difficult than, it's easier said than done because you can't really plan to go viral. Yeah. It just happens, you know? So. I mean, and truly, the most you can do is just be yourself, like they said. Yeah. And that seems to work for most people is just being authentic because I think over the last decade of social media, it got to a point where it was all this giant facade of the best of life. Mm-hmm. And now people are resorting back to just pure authenticity. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's resonating a lot more with people. Yeah, hundred percent. So, and it's hard. It's, it's like no. a lot easier when you're yourself. Like when you're trying to be a character, you gotta be in the mood for yeah. it. Or you gotta, you know, let it, you gotta feel a certain way. Yeah. But when you're yourself, it's okay, cool. Like it's it's like it's not even there. It's okay, cool. I'm just gonna be myself. Yeah, be and I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. Like in the beginning of my career, so when we were making my first album, the album was all pop. Yeah. Okay, it was fucking pop music because that the. When I started making it in 2000, the biggest shit was NSYNC, Backstreet, Britney, Christina Aguilera. And then what started to happen, by the time my record was about to come out, music was shifting and it was it was leaning more urban. Mm. So then you heard those artists, like NSYNC did it with Girlfriend. Yeah. Britney did it with Slave. Christina did it with Dirty. And I'm like, fuck, I can't make a fucking pop pop record because it's this is not what's happening right now. So that's when I went in. And we recorded Shook, Get Ready, and Spare My Wings, the three last songs, and then ended up being the three singles, right? And I went from being this pop guy to then like being the fucking velour tracksuit diamond chain guy, (laughs) right? And I got to be honest, like it was kind of me, but it kind of wasn't me. I was looking at your IG and I was looking at some of those older photos. I'm telling you, it was like a marketing thing, right? But tracksuits are back though yo i wish i still had those velour <laughs> tracksuits oh, the sean john the Rockefeller, oh. and nietzsche oh my god <laughs> uh, not sitting in some in, in your in your parents they're basement gone, nowhere. man they're oh. gone i know i have, I have a bin of some stuff that i kept um and i still have the chain at home <laughs> i should have brought it <laughs> yeah. so how are you reinventing if you are reinventing this version of you because um, this is a different version, but mm-hmm. I feel at the same time that while I'm using the word reinventing, that this is almost just a, here's who I really am. Like, uh, you, it's almost like you want to avoid anything that takes away from your authenticity. Yeah. But that's a reinvent, like you're reinventing that yeah. from what you used to be. Mm-hmm. No, I, f- yeah, I, I feel that. And I think the, ch- uh, ch- the challenging part and the most exciting was, one what is Sean Desmond going to sound like in 2022? Because I can't fucking do what Drake is doing, can't do what Bieber's doing, can't do what Sean Mendes is doing. I got to create this lane, which I, which is kind of what I've always did, is just make music that makes me feel good, that I think is fucking good, um, and do that. So that's what we did. And then also, like, again, I'm a 40-year-old man. What is Sean Desmond going to look like in, 20, in 2022, right? So, I mean, as you can see, this is what is what I look like now in 2022. <laughs> Miami Vice. What about, the, what about um, the dance moves? Yo, they still here, bro. Yeah, yeah, I still yeah, got it. Yeah. Yo, I still yeah. got it. Um, <laughs> they never go away. They don't go away. It's like riding a bike. Like I'm shooting my video and I'm like, ha, da, 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 pa, da. I'm like, oh, it felt so good to be doing yeah. that. You know what I mean? Um, just takes a little longer to warm up the body. Bro. <laughs> and my brain just works slower like to remember stuff. I'm like, yo, we got. To, can you do that again? I just need to... Let's run that a couple more times. Yeah. But it must feel amazing. Like, it must feel like a, a brand new, fresh breath air. 100%. Like, this is like my third go at this. Who fucking gets three goes? 
Who gets right? one? Who gets one goal? Fuck You're yeah. right. Who gets one? Like, I did it in 2002. I did it in 2010. And then it's 2022. And here I am. I'm doing it again. And not doing it and like people don't care. I'm doing it. And it seems to me that people care. It, people who followed me since 20, 2020, sorry, 2002, who may have been teenagers are now, you know, 36, 37, 38. But then I put out music in 2012, which was also big. They may have been 15 and now they're 25. My fan base range, it's like all over the place. And then I love when fans are like, yo, I listened to you as a kid. Now I have kids and they're listening to you. <laughs> um, it's so great. I have the most incredible loyal fan base. And again, now I'm like, again, with social media and all these platforms, I'm gaining a whole new fan base mm -hmm. of people. Um, and then they're go they're going back and like, holy shit, I know this. I remember this fucking song. Oh my god, this is this guy. Crazy. Like, it's it's it feels so good. And I, my home is on stage. Like, I am most comfortable on stage. Like performing. Like that is my fucking shit. Um, I've been doing it since I was nine years old, right? Like, I don't know if you guys know, but like, I record. I was a Portuguese Justin Bieber. Mm. I'm not even fucking kidding. I have five albums in Portuguese. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So from like nine to 16 years old, I recorded five albums, toured Portugal, toured all the Portuguese communities across Canada. I was the fucking Portuguese Justin Bieber before there was Justin Bieber. Um, so it's been a, a lot of years for me, man. This 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 didn't start in, in 2000. This mm -hmm. started in 1990. What was the what was your mindset like back then? Did when, you know at like, what point? It, it, so when you were first, like maybe not when you were you know nine years old, but when you were in your teens, and did you know you were gonna make it, or was it one of those you mm -hmm. didn't really know whether this was just for fun or whether this was gonna be something that you could actually pursue? I don't think I don't think anyone knows if they're gonna make it, right? Um, but I think I'd worked so hard up to that point, and people knew there was there was something there right there was some there's something here with this kid and in 2000 i got a phone call from bmg music canada because i was recording demos and sending cassette tapes to record labels and finally i get a phone call like yo got your demo we'd love for you to come to the office i hung up the phone right <laughs> i thought it was one of my friends playing a joke oh no i was like yo y'all are <laughs> fucking with me stop right um Calls back, Sean, yeah. This is so-and-so from BMG, BMG Music Canada. We want you to come down to the... I'm like, seriously? They're like, this is very serious. Tomorrow, 1 p.m., come down to the office. I went down, and they fucking offered me a deal. So... What was that feeling like? Oh, it was fucking crazy, <laughs> man. It was crazy. Um, I'm, I was only... I was In 2000, I was 18. So I was 18 years old. So imagine, and then I'm traveling the world, had never left the country without my parents. And here I am with this dude who just started managing me. Um, and I'm in Sweden. I was in Sweden for 9 11, okay. watching it on TV from Sweden. So imagine the first time I'm fucking away, and this shit is happening. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit. Like, it was crazy. Um, and then, yeah, first album comes out in 2002, and it just fucking goes. Get Ready comes out. It's the fucking T Dot song. Everybody's singing it. They know who I am. Shook comes out. Blows Get Ready out of the water. Shook was a massive song. Still to this day, it's it's one of my biggest requested yeah, songs. I believe right? that. Yeah. And let me tell you. So let me tell you a story. I went to after Shook came out and shit was crazy. I'm in Yorkdale Mall with my security guard and we're walking around because I need to buy some shit. I'm fucking. I'm, I'm a regular person. I need to go buy whatever. Fucking underwear, socks, whatever. So walking, and as we keep walking, the crowd is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger till finally it's fucking uncontrollable. I go into Athletes World, and they have to shut the doors of Athletes World. They're like, you need to go. I'm like, <laughs> but I haven't fucking done anything yet. They're like, Sean, there's like a thousand people out there. We are not set up for this. Like when, when these have... So let's say if we set up an event, we're set up. We have police, we have security. They're like, we're not, we cannot, you need to go. So I fucking like, 
that that was a, a it's still a vivid moment in my life where i'm like holy shit that's when it's real this is real yeah these people fucking they know me like i'm walking in the mall and there's a thousand people behind me following me that's crazy yeah it was crazy that's crazy yeah only i think only a handful of people can ever say that they experienced something like that you turn around and there's a thousand people yeah. walking out yeah. you. Mm-hmm. how does it you seem like a very fun dad so you're you were gone for a bit so you're son's 14 right yeah so i feel like you would have time like daddy was the man back in the day you know and it's just like you can be like see told you people love me like you know and how does that feel to be like look this is this is what i've been talking about this is like you know i am i am it's so fucking cool but like it's funny my middle son still says i'm cringe sometimes (laughs) yo dad you're cringe i'm like come on owen and then the other one i get is i'm like yo owen you need to go take a shower bro you stink and he turns to me he's like bruh i'm like (laughs) <laughs> who are you talking to yeah. bruh but no it's it's amazing because they were really young yeah. like like so Caden who's my oldest who's 14 was born in 2008 so he would have been two when like Shiver and I like this and that stuff came out then my son my second son Owen was 2011 still really young and then my daughter was born in 2014 right at the end of everything before everything went to shit so she didn't really get to fucking experience anything mm-hmm. now yo my daughter, like, I'm telling you, she's my biggest fan. She knows all the songs, and she's so proud. Like, she, everywhere she goes, I'm like, you got to stop telling people Sean Desmond is your dad. Mm. Like, stop. I just, you know Sean Desmond? That's my dad. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I don't know where. What time is it? Yeah. Sean Desmond's my dad. Yeah, I'm like, Sienna, <laughs> honestly, they don't care. Just stop. It, came, it was funny because it would come to the point where my kids would get invited to birthday parties from kids that weren't even their friends because their parents just wanted me to go to yeah, the birthday yeah, yeah, party. Yeah. And my wife is like, we're not fucking doing that. Like, no, we don't even know this kid. Yeah. Like, oh, and who is this kid? I don't know, mom. Well, you're not going to the fucking birthday party. And then, like, they would actually, it's funny because the kid would tell my son, like, well, my dad, my mom just wants to meet your dad. <laughs> and I'm like, not doing that. Everybody's a fan. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. That's amazing. Okay, so, Maniac, it's out. Mm-hmm. You shot the video. Mm-hmm. What comes next? So, video needs to come out. <laughs> Obviously. Um, a lot of talk about touring right now. Okay. Um, calls are starting to come in, which is great. I love that. Um, I'm writing writing and producing for an EP that should, I'm hoping by summertime, will be ready to be released. Nice. I hate putting a, a, a time on something because it's you a creative can't, process. can't put a time on that. Yeah. It's just got to happen and just let it happen, right? But I'm hoping for summer, then summer comes around, it's busy in summertime. Uh, festivals and whatnot. And I'm here, man. I'm here until until it's done which i don't know when that could be maybe that's in a month maybe that's in two months um but i'm just gonna keep i'm gonna ride this wave right now as long as i can because i honestly this is when i'm the most happy when i'm doing what i'm doing right now um and i don't want to let that go so that's that's you what you're happier now doing it or like when you first broke into it it's a different happy okay because I was happy then because I was a young kid. My dreams were coming true, right? Um, I, it's funny. I fucking tell people. I made my big first check. What I go do? Fucking buy a Lexus, a Lexus RX 330. I'm like, I wish my parents would have told me, like, yo, don't spend $60,000 on a car. Why don't you go buy a house, right? Mm. But my parents just weren't. They're not great with money. So anyway, <laughs> but again, it's a different happy because then now, I keep saying it, but I get to share it with my kids mm. and I get to share it with my wife and I can't wait to tour and like bring them on tour, bring them on the bus, stay with me. Like we, we do it as a family. You know what I mean? Um, cause honestly they're in my life. I do sure. I do this cause I love it. It's my passion, but I also do it for them. I want them to friggin' have a good life, go to school, me be able to provide for them and just be to them. I'm, Sure, I'm Sean Desmond to everybody, but to them, I'm just dad. But sharing these moments is really special with them. Really special. And also, also what makes me happy is that I'm happy. I'm in a good place mentally. Um, you have to be. Yeah, you have to be. Physically, I get up and go to the gym every day, every morning. It's the start of my day. Um, I know it's a little off topic, but I always tell people, like, if you don't make time for fitness now, make time for illness later. Mm. So... Yeah, different happy. Time to go to the gym. 
Depends. If I got early press, like I have been doing it, I've been at, I've been there this these past two weeks. I've been getting there at four forty five a.m. Okay. Usually, I'll drop off my kids and then go and get there like eight forty five a.m. But if there's shit going on, I go like stupid like stupid o'clock. I like to call it <laughs> up at four at the gym by four forty five. But it's a it's a must. Must. When I don't go to the gym one day, I feel like shit. Yeah. It it throws my whole day off. Yeah. So, it, but listen, it's also. People are like, yeah, you just want to have abs. Yeah, I fucking like looking good, but I also like feeling good. And it's part of my mental and it's my place of release. And like, I cry at the fucking gym sometimes. Mm. I'm working out and I'm crying because I'm thinking about shit. Like, it's just, it's the place where I get to go and just like fucking. Let it out. Let it out. Release. Release. Yeah. Be in my, be in a fucking zone and just like make myself better, I guess is the best way to put it. Amazing. Sean. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna tell you something, but before I do that, I want to thank you for coming in. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank this you was for, great. for sharing with us. Um, the city loves you. Country loves you. Everyone's excited that you're back. Don't go anywhere. And when you talked a little bit earlier about you want your music to impact people, in the early 2000s, I was at Fairview Mall. And you showed up at Fairview Mall. I remember that. And you were one of the thousand people. It's a different mall. <laughs> that was a different, different mall. mall. That was your, no, yeah. But there was probably over a thousand people or more at Fairview. And I remember standing on the railing with my dad and I was watching. My dad's like, who is this? And I'm like, that's Sean Desmond. And your music was so impactful then that this is a full circle moment for me. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I'm grateful to you for coming. And I'm grateful that you're back because... You're Sean Desmond, man. Oh, don't say that. Stop. Had some bangers, man. Had some bangers, man. Stop. You got you got to keep doing you. You got to keep as long as you stay where you're at mentally because it's such a breath of fresh air to hear someone talk about their life that way. Mm. And then the passion that you share for your craft, but the passion that you share for your family is just so inspiring and I really believe that the next generation of artists can learn something from that. Thank you, man. And uh, I hope you keep telling your story through your music and through your interviews and everything else you do because it's incredible. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. That's that's really nice of you to say, man. Oh, like, I'll take all of that. And it's like everybody's been telling me I learned a new term. I'm Sean Desmond is finally getting his flowers. Mm -hmm. I guess. Like, it, it's... Yeah, it's surreal. I guess I'm getting my flowers. And I, like I said, I guess I made an impact on a lot of people's lives. It's good, though, because most people don't get their flowers till after they're dead, right? So to 100%. see that, like you, he said, the third time going at it to see that people really are affecting people. Mm. And people still remember people. It's not like, oh, that who's that guy that has, like, you know, Sean, like, I was like, yeah, Sean, every, every knows Sean has been. Yeah. Like, you know, and so it's good. Uh, I'm just really happy that, I'm really happy that your wife's doing better, man. Because, Thank like, you. yeah, that's huge. I can, I can, tell that like that was obviously another burden on top of everything else yeah. so to hear that she's doing better. obviously i just obviously just love when people are doing better mm -hmm. but like to really at the same time because you it's it's a lot to battle and to Dude. juggle right so and it's people think these tears that i cry is just because i'm so happy that i'm making music no there's a lot of so shit, shit going, going on, on. Yeah. like it's a lot it was a lot um and for her too right yeah like, the the burden is at the end of the day you, you're you know, you're the partner, you're the supportive, mm -hmm. uh, you know, husband, father. Uh, we can only imagine what she, the burden that she has to deal with. And that's a burden that's heavy. Yeah. Right. 100%. So, you know, I think the, the, the lessons that people can take away from something like this too, is that sometimes you have to put your other aspirations on hold for family. Mm hmm for your for your kids yep. you know for your partner and i think that's an important lesson to take away from that too 100 percent, i agree man amazing sean thank you so much thank you guys thank this was you. great so happy you're here thank appreciate you guys it, thank man. you thank you everybody appreciate it